Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda and this is Jim. And we have been working very hard on getting the stalls up and, and ready to go. And we're finally at the point. And as you can hear, the, the colts are outside and they are extremely anxious to get in here tonight. And uh, it's, it's Saturday night and Jim is very tired he's been working super hard on this all week and for <clears throat> his birthday um the kids made signs to go over the stalls for that each made, of the horses that sounded pretty good um a little bit more to the right i think that's good we debated about where to put them whether they're going to be visible or not but decided to go with here. We obviously know what their names are, but when people come to visit, they're standing back here and they can see easier what their names are. So that's why we decided that. And don't these stalls look great? Jim worked very, very hard on them. He'll tell you all about them in a little bit. Um, and we have mats underneath and they're covered with sawdust and he'll tell you about that whole situation. Just give you a peek inside the manger here. We have thought that um, these are maybe a little bit high right here, but... No, I Oh, you adjusted them all, okay. So we had talked about putting something in the bottom, but he adjusted them, so. This is his right. Looks good. He's just about shot. He's been working all week and he's the stuff is heavy and it's Saturday night and tomorrow's a day of rest so he's excited about that and wants to finish up. Last one. Let's see what the horses think of the stalls. Last night Lady and Bill were in here. They were in their new stalls and uh, I think everybody and this morning Jim brought them in to from their mains and they were all looking around it'll be interesting to see what ken and buck think because they didn't actually go in their stalls good yeah it looks good Okay, let's get the horses in and I'll explain a few things that I haven't explained on these stalls. And I wanted to talk to you about my water situation too, because a lot of people have asked why I haven't, don't have water bowls in my stalls. And I want to talk a little bit about that and show you what I have, a, you know, I'll show you why that's like it is. Okay. Who's coming first? And we have the Colts. Hey, Buck. Hey, hey, Kenny. I think. Yeah, Paul. Get out of here. Get yourself. Get yourself. Ken, have you been being mean to the Colts? Because it sure looks like it. Buck is so nice to the Colts. I call him Grandpa. But Kenny, apparently, is not so nice. 
We'll see if Ken notices a difference here. You ready to try it out, Buck? Come on. You can't go in there. Hey, come on, Buck. Come on. Ken, I'm not No, it's the right one. Come on, Kenny, what do you think? Kenny, what do you think? Do you like it? We got just a dusting of snow and uh, there's a little bit of ice under the snow, but it just makes everything so quiet and serene when you get a little bit of snow. I love it. And here we have Billy. Come on, lady, you coming? I think they like it. Do you like it? I do. It's lovely. They look great in here. There's a couple other things I still have to do. I gotta get. Oh, Bill. I gotta get uh, a couple lag bolts. I got a hole here, a hole down the bottom to tie that all together. If uh, if they were to kick right here right now, they could slide the, not likely, but possibly slide that out a little bit. Um, but after I lag those two in, that'll stop that problem. And it's for these guys, it's not a problem, but it definitely needs to be done just in case I had a kicker in here. And, uh, I have, will show you a few minutes ago I, what we did on that mat right there, but I'm trying a two mats and I didn't uh, realize how much of a slope the cement has down towards Lady. I knew there's some slope, but I didn't realize how much of a slope. But uh, because of that, um, these are mats are six feet long. And I was, I just kind of recently decided to try this. And so we put the two together and I'll show you from earlier where we had sealed the joint and by having it all extra stuff right here rolled, um, any urine and whatnot could, will stop there and then it will come down onto the back of them. A few more screws.
Okay, so the tape that we used was Flex Seal tape. It's supposed to work on hot or cold and wet or dry anywhere. It just said put it on a clean surface. We have our doubts. We don't know if it's going to work or not, but eh, we had it. We thought we'd try it. The other three horses just have one mat in each stall. And uh, this mat here, for example, I have it way over here to this edge. And there's, since it's only four foot wide, there's still a foot and a half right there that has no mat on. But there again, because of the slope of the barn, that should catch all the urine and, and I should be able to scrape it right off and that should work out good. Um, I, I want to show you from earlier though, uh, a little clip of an explanation of why I do my water in the barn the way I do it. Well, my tub needs to be filled up, so I'm going to show you how I get my water and how I do my whole water system. As you can see, I got my calendar up there. This is the Working Horses for Jim calendar with all the different pictures throughout the year. And we still have some of these for sale. So let us know if you want any of those. But let me show you how my water is set up. So to get my water to the horse barn, I have to come through this section of the building here and through the old cow barn. And then we go into what used to be the milk house when we were milking cows. And now it's turned into a dry kiln. So let me open up the... Get the insulation boards out of the way. And open up the door to the dry kiln. And it is toasty warm in here. I have a little bit of lumber here for a customer that brought this lumber here. I'm not sure why that dirt's there, but anyways. Um, so this is my dry kiln, and this is the only heated place we have out here, and this is where the water comes in from the well. The way this is set up here is the water from the well comes into here, and then it goes from here into our house. So when we stopped milking cows, there was no heat from the from the cows. So we had to do something to keep this um, room warm and or continue keeping it warm. This is a, a uh, Modine heater that we have that heats it is from our outdoor furnace. And we had that in back when we were milking cows and we had to keep it running and we actually insulated it more for this dry kiln. And uh, so now the, we have water here in the barn, but it's still, how do you get it from here to the horse barn? And so um, this is a setup we set up years ago and it's worked fairly well. Um, and so I will show you how that's, that go. So anyways, we have water here and it's warm in here, so nothing freezes. But now I have to the water the horses, so I will take the water hose and take it across the barn floor here Back when we were milking cows, I would have water right out here to this point and then go to the horse barn. But now we have to drag this hose across every day to fill tubs. So to get the water from that hose, I could just have a longer hose and carry it all the way to the horse barn to fill the tub. But that's would be a lot of extra work and I'd have to drag all that hose back into the dry kiln to keep it from freezing. So what I did is I ended up taking a piece of black plastic and I did this years and years and years ago now. And this plastic goes up into the rafters and goes across the rafters and it comes down into the horse barn. And that 
is set up so that when I shut the water off when I'm done, I just shut the water off. So I connect that up like that, and all I do is turn the water on. And so the water goes up that black plastic pipe all the way to the top, through the rafters, then it comes down. And it goes up. Now our barn is too often cold, so if we would have water uh, in the stalls with a float or whatever, it would freeze. And especially during the day because the horses are all working or outside during the winter time, and so the barn is, is very cold. We do put a heater in the tub here to keep the tub from freezing, but that's the only heater that we use. So this water just runs, and when, I, when it's tub is full, I have to go and shut it off. So when I shut it off, if I was to have a plug at that end, and then I shut it off here, and if I left it here, of course, it would all freeze. So I disconnect it here. And what I do, since the other end is open, the water runs right out. And I usually just lay it on my manure spreader and it just drains out. So that makes a very good, simple setup that works just fine. And then I have to, when I'm done, take all the hose, roll it up again, and put it back in the dry throne. But it's a fairly short piece of hose, so it's not a big deal. Sounds like a pain, but it's, I only need to do this during the, the winter time. During the summertime, I can leave the hose hitched up and just turn it off out, on and on as I need it to fill up the tubs. I could, I suppose, put in some water, uh, some waterers for the horses that are used just in the summertime, but even that's a bit of a pain because when my horses come in hot, I don't want them to have all the water that they drink. So I would have to shut them off during that time too. So it's just simpler for me just to do it the way I do it. And uh, I have no problems with it. So that's, uh, that's my water setup. Just wanted to show you that. So I think that's the end of the video. I hope I'm very pleased with the horse part. Um, I, I was gonna say, I hope you guys like it, but I guess it doesn't really matter if you like it or not because I've got to deal with it every day. But we do want you to like it, and we thank you for all the nice comments of, and suggestions. And there's a few things that you had um, said, oh, I wish I had thought of that before. Yes, some the, of the suggestions yes there was that some, we got, some things. But. Also, one of the things I just want to talk about for a second, um, a lot of people have noticed, and I might have talked about it before, but the ceiling over Lady is not finished. And the reason for that is I don't have enough strapping. There was, there's, it just didn't work out with the wood and the rafters up above, they, I can't remember now, now but something about the rafters on, just on the other side of the wall, so there's no place to hitch the ends of the boards. So we chose to stop right there at the last rafter because the rafters here are four foot apart. And that wall is coming down next summer, hopefully, and we'll add on and, and fix the roof at that point. So that's why that looks like that. But uh, other than that, they look like they have more room in here than they did before. It's a little bit wider because I had some six by sixes and several of these stalls, I had two by sixes spiked onto this straight across. So we actually made them, it, it was several inches narrower. So this should work really good. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how things go. So I guess that's it for today's video. If you haven't subscribed, 
please consider doing so. We're still trying to reach our goal of 50,000 by Christmas uh, subscribers. And hit the like button if you like this video. Hope you have a great night. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.